Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting a lakeside inn surrounded by autumn trees and like usual I'm going to begin by sketching it out. Since the inn is going to be the focal point of this painting and I'm going to place it at the center, the structure of the building is what I'm going to draw out first and while I'm drawing I try to imagine how much space I need for the trees to frame the inn and for it to fit the page. Once I did that, I break down the structure of the building by drawing out the basic shapes with guidelines and I also draw very lightly so it's easy to erase and paint on top of the drawing. This way, the pencil marks won't show through the colors. To paint this, I actually used a reference image that I found on Pinterest. I thought I saved the link but unfortunately I didn't. I tried to look for the picture again and I've been looking for a couple of days now when I have the time to but I just couldn't seem to find the reference image again. However, after I painted this, I went on a trip to Slovenia and visited Lake Bled. I rented a boat and when we were rowing through the lake, I found that this is where the picture was actually taken. It was also in the beginning of fall when I did this, so some of the trees were only starting to change colors, so it's not as exaggerated as this painting. But I was just so excited to see the actual inn without actually knowing where it was located originally. Unfortunately, it was raining and it was also really cold so I couldn't get a clear video. I was also shaking a bit. But yeah, this is the actual building that the painting is based on. I simplified the building for the painting and I noticed from the position of the sidewalks and things that this is the exact place so I was super happy and excited to find it. So hopefully the video is useful enough for you to imagine what the actual place is based on. Since this is a small sketchbook, I didn't include as many windows and small details like the window shutters and things like that. I feel like if I were to include them, I would need a bit more space. If not, the details would just get mixed up and muddled into the composition and it won't make a clear focal point. I know, however, a lot of you like green framed windows, according to the comment section. <laughs> So if you still want to incorporate the color because I know it goes really well against the brown background of the house or the inn itself, you can customize your painting by changing the color of the window frames instead. So after drawing out the building, I just drew different shaped trees surrounding it. I also added smoke coming out of the chimney that's going to intertwine with the trees to add a bit of movement to the composition, but generally I tried to think about how I would like the trees to frame the whole composition. So even if the trees might not be there in the reference image, I'm just going to add them on if I feel like the trees would benefit the composition. In front of the building, I also added a small sidewalk which is actually in the reference image as well and some fence for the entry point of this painting. Then I left a bit of space at the bottom for the water reflection. Next here are the colors that I'm going to be using. Firstly, this is New Gamboge by Daniel Smith, Vermilion by Holbein, Burnt Umber by Holbein, Indigo by Schmincke, Hooker's Green by Cotman, Chinese White by Holbein, and Titanium Gold Ochre by Schmincke. I'll also be using these three pens to outline. And firstly, I have my Sakura Micron pen in 01 and it's in the color sepia. I also have my uni pen fine line in 0 0.1 and 0 0.5. And the colors here are light brown, which is lighter than the sepia. Since the elements of this painting are quite small, I'm only going to be using this small brush for the whole painting. I'm going to create a mid-tone brown that's a little bit pastel. And for this, I use burnt umber as the main brown. And to make it pastel, I added some titanium gold ochre, Chinese white, and also some new gamboge to make it a little bit more yellow. And I used this to paint the top part of the inn. For the next level, I'm going to create a darker brown. So I'm using the same mixture, but this time I'm going to add more burnt umber in the ratio. I'm just going to paint it with a flat wash. And my main concern here is to paint as cleanly as possible next to the windows and leaving it as a negative shape. So I'm trying 
to paint as close to the edges as possible but I'm just going to go over the balcony area for now because I'm just going to line it using a darker color later on. For the bottom of the balcony, to remind myself that there's also a balcony there, I just use a thick consistency of vermilion. Moving down to the bottom floor, I'm going to create a creamy neutral color. I started with a touch of indigo and Chinese white, then I picked up some of the brown that I've already premixed on my palette, added a little bit of titanium gold ochre, and I adjusted the lightness of the color by adding more Chinese white in the ratio. I'm going to paint it the same way by avoiding the windows as well as the door this time, and I'm painting it on the ground floor and the second floor instead of just one level. And this time since I'm closer to the trees, I also want to be mindful of where there are trees in front. I want to avoid painting on those areas. Once I'm done, since the paint was quite thick, I ended up taking off some of the paint with my tissue so it becomes a bit lighter. I'm also going to use the same color mixture for the roof and the chimney. Next I'm going to paint the windows. I'm going to start by creating a dark brown by using a mix of burnt umber and indigo. And I also realized that I should have painted the windows first before using this dark color over the top. So I'm actually going to switch colors to a mix of indigo and Chinese white. With this color, I'm just going to use a thin consistency to cover all of the windows. So you realize here that I picked dark brown for the window frames and I picked it because it's dark enough to paint over any color of the building so I don't have to worry too much about layering. However, if you want your window frames to be green, you can paint it beforehand or if you've already painted the building exterior like I have here, you can also pre-paint the window frame with opaque white gouache or bleed proof white to create a white base first so you can paint the green over it. Once I'm done painting the glass windows, I'm going to wait for them to dry so I'm going to paint the door first using the dark brown that I already have on my palette and then I reuse the creamy color again to paint the sidewalks. Unfortunately, the windows are still wet at this point so I'm going to move on to paint the other elements. I'm going to paint the grass area and for this I used Hooker's Green on New Gamboge as the dominant color to create a yellow green. Then I add a titanium gold ochre to turn it into a pastel green and lastly a touch of vermilion to make this more muted. While painting the grass area, I like to switch the ratio slightly so sometimes I may add more new gamboge, more vermilion or more titanium gold ochre in the mix and this slight variation will add more interest to the painting instead of just painting using a flat color for that whole area. By painting the grass area first, I feel like this also helped me visually because there were a lot of trees surrounding the inn and I couldn't really distinguish or I may have forgotten which area is the grass or the land and which area are the bushes and the trees. So it's good to do this at the beginning of the painting. I think at this point I've just forgotten about the windows so I'm going to go ahead and paint the trees as well as the bushes. So here I'm using the same green as the base and I'm just adding new gamboge as well as vermilion to create this orangey reddish brown color and I'm just going to apply it to some of the bushes. I usually like to paint the edges first to make sure that the edges are nice and uneven. I also play around with the levels and then I just dot in the rest of the paint and I also play with the ratio a little bit just like what I did with the grass area. At the bottom here, I added a bit of burnt umber and I also used burnt umber to paint the bush at the back but it was a bit too watery so I ended up taking off some of the paint and then repainting the edges with the green. At this point, I'm just going to color the bushes so I can also figure out the layering of these bushes within the composition. For the previous bush, I used the same green as the grass but I added more indigo in the mixture that's why it turned into this dark green and i just used whatever was left on my brush with the indigo and the green to paint the lighter bush on the right hand side generally i'm just using 
the grass green and the orangey brown that I've pre-mixed on my palette and I just play around with the ratio adding certain hues into it depending on the color that I'm visualizing and while I paint larger trees like this one I like to stop maybe one third of the way, introduce a different color and do that again at the bottom to incorporate a lot of different colors or different hues for one tree and this will just create a bit of interest and I'm just going to let the watercolor do its thing and let it mingle with each other. You can also play around with the consistency so some trees might not be as vibrant and the lighter color though it might look washed out now it can also add a certain coolness or iciness to the painting and if you don't end up liking it you can always layer on more color for a darker value anyway so feel free to play around with the consistency as well as i'm painting you can see me jump from tree to tree this is because i want to make sure that the ones that i've painted dry completely before painting the ones next to them this will reduce the risk of the colors bleeding into each other and creating a mess this way you can clearly see the individual trees especially along the edges and I feel like the sharper edges are also a nice contrast to the flowy mixture of colors of the trees. Another consideration to have in mind while painting the trees is also to use different colors for the trees nearby especially if they're touching and this will also be another way to separate them individually. Don't forget to also paint the trees behind the ones that you've already painted. This way it's much more believable in the composition. And as you can see here, I'm painting a tree that is quite similar in color to the one that is already painted in front, but I'm using a darker value. This way those trees can stay individual and separate from each other. I forgot to also mention that it's quite important to leave out some small negative spaces here and there for some of the trees because no tree is completely dense and this will also add a lightness or an airiness to your painting. If you want to add vibrancy to the color of your trees, I would suggest for you to use a medium to thick consistency, especially when you want to combine a few different colors like the tree that I'm painting there. A thicker consistency also means that the paint will be less runny since it has less water so when you're putting different colors next to each other they will just slightly mingle with each other without them actually just mixing into each other like what it would do if your paint were too runny if you're going to attempt your own version of this painting don't worry so much about getting the exact same colors as what i'm using but instead play around and experiment with the color mixing because it's so much fun when you're doing this without pressure and just play around with different combinations As I'm starting to paint the trees for the background, I want to start playing with the consistency a bit more now because I want maybe the tips to be in a thicker consistency but for the bottom to be a bit lighter so the trees look further away. And this will just differentiate the foreground and the background. I'm also painting closer to the smoke line from the chimney and as I'm painting the trees close by or touching the smoke line, I want to first paint around that. So as you can see, I'm treating the smoke line as a separate object for now, but I'm going to get to it later. Now that I'm done painting the main tree, when it comes to part of the tree that's behind the smoke, 
I'm just going to paint it using a really thin consistency of the exact same color so it looks like the smoke is covering part of the tree but you can still see the transparency of the smoke. I'm also going to treat this tree the same way that's touching the smoke line and I'm just painting around it first and once I've painted that I'm going to connect the rest of the tree within the smoke line using a really thin consistency of the same color. Since I want the smoke to interact and intertwine through some of the trees, I also want to paint some trees which are positioned in front of the smoke, like the ones that I'm painting at the moment. I'm just going to keep painting the rest of the trees for now but as you can see there's part of the smoke which isn't touching any of the trees but instead of cutting the line short I want to expand it to the top of the page for the sake of the composition that I've already sketched out and in order to do that I need to have a background so I can leave the smoke as negative space and since it's autumn I'm going to add a light grayish blue sky using a mix of indigo and a bit of Chinese white in a really thin consistency and this means adding a lot of water and I'm also using a really heavy brush load. I'm still using my small brush to apply the color because I want the surface to be uneven by making sure some parts of the sky are more wet than the others so when it dries, it dries unevenly and it creates some blooming textures. I like to place the color in one space and to make the color a bit lighter I pull the color further with more water without adding more paint so some parts of the sky is also slightly darker than the others. Next here I'm going to be painting the water. I used a mix of New Gamboge, Hooker's Green and Indigo and I first use a medium to thick consistency to paint the darker parts of the water which alternates in terms of position until I reach the other side and to create the simple texture I'm just going to paint horizontal lines. I want to make sure I cover the majority of the space and as for the areas where I've left completely white I'm going to use a thinner consistency of the exact same color in a dry brush load so the textures that I'm making as I'm painting horizontal lines are a little bit textured but it's also very subtle. Once I'm done with both of the colors I like to go over the darker areas again using a slightly thicker consistency to build the value. Once I'm done with the water, I'm just going to add a line using one of the brown mixtures that I already had on my palette just to give a clear indication of the separation between the water and the land. Then I finally went back in to the rest of the details for the inn and I used the mid-tone brown to paint on some details or textures of the wood and I also started using some dark browns in a thicker consistency and in a lighter consistency for the window frames. For the darker brown mixture I used indigo mixed with burnt umber and I just basically played around with the ratio as well as the consistency to create different variations of the value. For the reddish brown that I used to paint some outlines for the roof and things like that, I basically just added a bit more burnt umber and also a bit of vermilion. Sorry for jumping around here but before I forget I'm just going to add the stems and branches for some of the trees using the dark brown mix. For the stems of the trees I applied a bit more pressure as I paint to create a thicker line and as I get to the branches I use the tip of my brush and I paint it without too much pressure so the lines are more thin. 
It also helps to have a light load on your brush so your paint doesn't travel too fast out of your bristles which helps with creating thin lines. I like to also add some loose branches to help with the framing of the composition around the sides or the edges of the frame and I just find that the branches without the leaves make the composition look a bit lighter. For the rest of the details of the inn, I just ended up using my pen so the line weights are a bit clear and I also realized that I made a mistake for the balcony off the second floor where the tree is supposed to cover the right hand side of the balcony so please don't make the same mistake. I've also fixed this mistake on the outline I'll be uploading on Kofi. For the balcony and the window frames, I mostly used my sepia pen which is a bit darker but I want the texture of the exterior to be a bit lighter and less glaring compared to the windows so I used my lighter brown pen. With my thinner light brown pen I'm also going to add some more branches so the lines are much finer and the color is lighter so the branches stay subtle but it's still there. And here I'm going over the windows again using the same color mixture just a little bit darker in value to balance with the rest of the colors. And that's basically it for this painting. If you guys enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye!